Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you're having a fantastic day so far. So tomorrow, payments worth all the way up to $4,873 are going to be going out to certain beneficiaries of Social Security. We're going to be going over who can expect to receive those payments. Plus, the debate between President Biden and former President Donald Trump is going to be coming up in just a couple of days. And they're going to be going over numerous topics. Social Security, more than likely, is going to be one of them. So we're going to be comparing what the two's viewpoints are right now on Social Security. And of course, we will probably be learning a whole lot more whenever that debate takes place, at least we can hope. But before we go ahead and dive into the main content of today's video, if you wouldn't mind helping me out real quickly by just giving this video a like, that just helps out with the good old YouTube algorithm. And also consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already. Plus, if you would like to receive up to $200 in free stock or $200 in free cash in a pinned comment below, I will be leaving a link to Robinhood. All you have to do is once you click on that link is just sign up for a free account and then simply link your bank account. You do not even have to make an opening deposit. At that point in time, Robinhood will be sending you one free stock worth all the way up to $200. And if you'd rather just have the cash, all you have to do is once you receive the free stock, it's just sell for what it's worth and then transfer the cash value right back to your bank account. Okay, so the debate between President Biden and former President Donald Trump is coming up in just a couple of days. It's going to be held on June 27th. Of course, hosted by CNN, there won't be anyone in the audience. They're going to have the ability to mute microphones. We'll have to see how all of that plays out, of course. And we already know, just based on the last two debates between the two, it probably won't be all that productive. Probably it would be the two sort of just attacking each other. Biden, of course, will just be, you know, going uh, uh, January 6th, January 6th, January 6th, over and over and over. And then Trump can come back and uh, hit him with inflation, how the economy is going. And, of course, the fact that he was not prosecuted for... Uh, the, the documents that he had because the, the person who was investigating the case basically said that Biden was old and he just didn't know any better and all this. But of course, as far as different viewpoints go uh, from the American population and how they, how they felt the most important things were in their viewpoints of who they would vote for, you can see this list up on the screen here. The number one thing of course, is strengthening the economy at 73%. Then we can see defending against terrorism at 63%, reducing influence of money in politics at 62%, reducing healthcare costs at 60%, improving education at 60%, and then making Social Security financially sound also very high up there on the list, also at 60%. But as far as strengthening the economy goes, we can look at these swing states, and these swing states are ones, of course, they can go either way. They can either vote for Biden, they can vote for Trump. They're going to be very, very close. It's going to be maybe one or two percentage points, and it's really going to be the, the, the people in the middle who are ultimately going to decide who wins. But right now, we can see, according to these swing states, the, the, the most important thing, which, of course, is the economy, according to that list, Donald Trump leads in all of these states. Um, although I'm not sure why they have Florida on there as a swing state that's uh, very much a red state, but uh, Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, North Carolina, and Pennsylvania, in all those states, Americans trust more Donald Trump with the economy. Then as far as Social Security goes, right now we know certain things of what Joe Biden is proposing. We know certain things of what Donald Trump is proposing. So according to the Motley Fool right now, Biden's main proposal for keeping Social Security solvent is asking the highest income Americans to pay their fair share. He has been adamant about not raising taxes on anyone making less than $400,000. One way to implement this proposal is to make all income of $400,000 or more subject to the payroll tax used to fund Social Security. Then candidate Biden recommended this approach in his 2020 presidential campaign. The president also wants to improve Social Security benefits with a special focus on those who face the greatest challenges of making ends meet. Although no details were included for this in his proposed budget, in the past, Biden has called for some benefit increases, such as a guaranteed minimum benefit equal to at least 125% of the federal poverty uh, level. He also, he also proposed in the 2020 campaign to increase benefits by 5% for anyone who has received their benefits 
for 20 years or more. And then as far as Trump's social security proposals, he hasn't really put that much out there. All he has said in the past, or, or at least over the past couple of years, is that he is not going to be cutting social security. And he also said that he's firmly against raising the full retirement age. That was one position that Nikki Haley had, and he sort of placed a tax on her for her saying that she was wanting to raise the full retirement age from 67 up to 69 or 70. But according to this here, once again, according to The Motley Fool, former President Trump's 2024 campaign website mentions Social Security, but only briefly. There's one sentence on the site that says he will always protect Medicare, Social Security, and patients with pre-existing conditions. To assess Trump's position on Social Security, we, we must turn to his public comments. For the most part, he has expressed opposition to any changes to Social Security. And during a Fox News town hall in December 20. 2023, Trump stated, quote, you don't have to touch Social Security. He wants to use the U.S. oil supply to help fund Social Security along the same lines as Saudi Arabia uses its oil wealth to fund public programs. Then, of course, on top of that, Trump seems to reject the idea of increasing the full retirement age. He criticized former U.N. ambassador and South Carolina governor Nikki Haley during the most recent GOP presidential nomination campaign for her proposal to raise the retirement age for younger Americans. And whether or not they actually touch base more on the debates in regards to Social Security, we'll have to wait and see. Of course, like I just mentioned, Biden's going to be coming out with all the attacks, January 6th, January 6th, January 6th, um, indicted criminal. He's gonna be calling Trump, of course, all these different words. And then Trump, of course, can come back with his own attacks and like how, how the economy is going, all of the inflation that Americans have faced. And we'll have to see how productive of a conversation they have. Um, and yeah, we'll have to see. But I, I would think that Social Security will definitely be one of the topics that they talk about, how far the two candidates expand on their views and what they plan to do and what they're going to push Congress to do. We'll have to wait and see. And once again, of course, how productive the conversation and debate will actually be as the two are just going to be constantly talking over each other. Uh, it should definitely make out to being uh, some very interesting entertainment. Now, on top of that, of course, tomorrow, there's going to be payments going out to certain beneficiaries of Social Security. These are going to be the final payments going out this month in the month of June until the July payments start rolling out. Now, these payments are going to be worth up to $4,873 here, according to Newsweek. So Social Security benefits are paid monthly to tens of millions of Americans, with some recipients set to receive nearly $5,000. This coming Wednesday, June 26, retirees who were born between the 21st to 31st of any given month in the year will get their monthly check from the SSA all other beneficiaries, including those with different birthdays, supplemental security income SSI recipients, those who have been claiming since before 1997, and those who live in another country have already been paid throughout the month in June. And not every Social Security recipient will get the maximum monthly amount of $4,873, of course. The average monthly retirement benefit paid to claimants in January 2024 and throughout this entire year has been just $1,907. And Social Security payments are calculated using the 35 highest earning years of your career and then, of course, are adjusted for inflation every single year. So we're going to know what the next cost of living adjustment is going to be in about four months in the month of October. That's when we're going to have the third quarter data for the CPIW, which we're going to be able to compare to the third quarter data for the CPIW uh, for last year in 2023. And whatever that has increased by is what the cost of living adjustment is going to be. So that's all we have for today's video. I certainly hope that you enjoyed and found value out of it. If you did, again, I would greatly appreciate if you could give this video a like. Consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already, and I will see you in the next video.